Thank you, James. Ladies and gentlemen, it's an honor and a privilege to be here with you following the, uh, the great senator from the state of Utah, Mike Lee. Um, I, I send uh, Governor Herbert's regards. Unfortunately, he is unable to be here with us today. He is out recruiting an event that's, that's coming to the state of Utah, doing the great work that you elected him to do. And uh, much like uh, Senator Lee, he likes to joke that he was elected chair of the National Governors Association because he's the only governor not running for president. So. <laughs> It's been a fascinating uh, ride for me over the last 18 months to serve as your lieutenant governor. And uh, everywhere I go, I get the same question. I also serve as the Secretary of State for the great state of Utah, so when foreign dignitaries come here, I get a chance to interact with them. Um, over the past few months, I've had very interesting discussions with the, uh, with the ambassador uh, from Russia to the United States. He made it very clear that we're not real happy with his boss right now, and uh, he made it clear to me that he wasn't real happy with, with our boss. No, that's, that's okay. Um, but we, uh, as, as I have these discussions, um, something very interesting happens. Uh, inevitably, as we're talking about the economy here in the state of Utah, you know what's happening, you've seen the numbers, 4.2% uh, growth, when you look at what's happening nationally, the anemic growth, Utah is leading the way, in fact, we're number one in the last two months uh, when it comes to growth in the, in the, uh, in the nation. And when you, when you see that, that's because of you. Now, inevitably, though, the question comes back to me, why Utah? And, and I always push back. My colleagues across the nation, why Utah? And what they're trying to say is, you know, I get the United States of America, I understand the East Coast and the West Coast, but I don't understand how this small, square, kind of rural, western state with these weird people in the middle of nowhere is having all of this success. And so, as I try, I want you to think about how you would answer that question. More importantly, I want, to, I want you to think about what you're doing we to make different Utah cues. this incredible place that it is. And, and as I answer that question, there may be no right or wrong answer, but I'll tell you, somebody else gave me another answer. Last week, I had the uh, general consul from, uh, from Spain here, and he was talking about his country. He was talking about how, how terrible it's been since the Great Recession. <coughs> Their unemployment rate right now is 23%. Our unemployment rate right now is 3.4%. Young men ages, ages 18 to 35, the unemployment rate is 50%. And he said this to me, he said, do you know how we've been able to survive as a country these last eight years with that kind of, of an economy? Do you know how we've been able to survive as a people? And I said, no, I'm very interested. And he said, it's the same reason I love Utah. And I said, why is that? He said, we've been able to survive because we believe in God and we believe in family. So ladies and gentlemen, now when I answer the question, why Utah, it was a diplomat from Spain that helped me know why Utah, because we believe in God and we believe in family. Thank you for what you're doing to make Utah an incredible place to live. Now, I live in Sandy County. I travel 200 miles round trip every day to the capital to do my job. And uh, I drove 54,000 miles last year and my car never left the state of Utah, visiting every corner of this state. I would say that to say this, I get a lot of opportunity to uh, listen to books on tape. And I've been listening to a biography on every president. And I've shared this with some of you before, but I learned something very unique. The, the population of the original 13 colonies did during the Revolutionary War, 3 million people. Interestingly, that just happens to be the population of the great state of Utah right now, 2.98 million people. And as I thought about that, you know, it took 3 million people to change the course of history. And for some reason, as I see Senator Mike Lee, our other members of Congress, Utah is crunching way above its weight right now. We're less than 1% of the population of this country, and yet you can't turn around without reading an article in the Wall Street Journal, The Economist, The Atlantic. Everybody is looking at Utah. They're looking at us. If it took 3 million people to change the history of the world 250 years ago, it just might take 3 million people to do it again. We need your help. God bless you. It's very, very